Hello, and welcome to an intro to Anthro with Two Humans. I'm human number one, John McRae. And I'm human number two, John Lear. And this is the podcast where we reassess what it means to be human. And the title of this episode is How Sweet It Is and Salty. <laughs> Sugar and Salt, The Taste of Being Human. Oh, <laughs> look at that. How sweet it is. And salty. You know, and salty. <laughs> and salty. Uh, you know, How Sweet It Is is a reference to a 1950s uh, television show. Right. Uh, called, uh, oh, Jesus, why can't I think? The Jackie Gleason Show? Jackie Gleason Show, yeah. I think. Yes. Was it The Honeymooners? Did he do The Honeymooners, honeymoon? that's the it. Honeymoon. How sweet it is. Now, <laughs> yeah. That's you know a, a you know you're that's a deep cut. You're going yeah. back in time. Yeah, uh, and and you've had a few. I, I can't remember them now, but you've had a couple that are going back in time. Like you're uh, coming out. You know you're 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 reaching back into the, <laughs> into the history, the even fabric, in your, the even, fabric of yeah. our culture. Yeah. I was in a uh, bathroom today at a urinal, as one yeah. is, and uh, I saw written above the urinal, Kilroy was here. Really? Which is also <laughs> a very old, I think it's from the 30s or 40s, maybe? Yeah, yeah. I think it was during uh, World War One or World War Two that became a big joke to, like, put the Kilroy was here, just to, like, think he was, we, we talked about it in one of our episodes, I yeah, think, right? I thought of you immediately. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is. I mean, there's multiple layers on this show that you can yes, enjoy it on, yes. on different, uh, different. Uh, but, the, but the great thing about the Kilroy is it had to be written by somebody our age or older. <laughs> so I love that somebody, <laughs> some some old dude is defacing yeah, yeah. a bathroom stall wall. That's great. Yeah, I would love to see some like octogenarian, mm-hmm. some ninety year old guy there, like waiting Snickering. for everyone to leave. <laughs> and they get- yeah, Kilroy, I got it. <laughs> He gets out his uh, fountain pen and goes to town <laughs> on that. Uh, so anyway, John, though, we are, we're going to talk about sugar and salt today. I am very much looking forward <laughs> to this because one of the inspirations for this show. Yeah. I mean, you, you, I mean, this show, you know, I've, I've, you know, I didn't unknowingly have wanted to do it for, this show is kind of our conversations because you are right. so well read. And you know all this historical stuff, and I'm just fascinated about it. And I remember years ago you telling me you were reading a book on salt, right? And right. I, which Mark didn't Karlansky's even Lansky's book, yeah, it didn't even make me blink the fact that you're reading a book on salt. I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, but then immediately I wanted to know, well, what's you know? And you told me yeah. a few things about salt, which I guess right, right, have been disproved. Some of the things you told me, I, I think, or, or some of the things uh, we'll come to Kurlansky's book. Mark Kurlansky writes a bunch of books. He's written some of my favorite books. Uh, he wrote one on cod, for example, <laughs> the fish cod, which salt cod was really popular at one time. <laughs> he also wrote the Basque history of the world, which is about the Basque. Ooh, well, the people. Basque were big cod fishermen too, weren't they? Right. Yeah, uh-huh. exactly. Yeah. So there you go. He just he just <laughs> broke it into two books to make a little extra coin. And then he did salt, which salt yeah. also uh, played a big part in the uh, the cod fish. Working on pepper. Pepper's coming out. <laughs> well, it's funny you mention that because this topic uh, actually came to us from uh, my wife, Mary, who uh, also is a listener to our show. And in charge of merchandising (laughs) Uh, and SEO, (laughs) SEO, search engine optimization. She's in charge of a lot of stuff. Right. She's probably in charge of more stuff than we are. (laughs) (laughs) She absolutely is. I love it when she emails us because she refers us to human number one and human number two. She right. doesn't refer to us by our real names, which to keep I, us straight. Yeah. <laughs> to keep us straight. <laughs> uh, she's actually, you know, uh, sh- she's given us topics before. Like mm. she gave us the topic for the hoax episode. Oh, that's a goodie. By uh, by giving me an article on the Cern Abbas giant. Oh, and, <laughs> and that got you going. Right, right. Oh, there you and go. For, that's all you need to do is feed you a little pellet right. like that. You're right, like a right. rat in a maze where you, you hit the lever for a hit of cocaine and you're off and running. Right. Don't say to me, like, what about? And then give yeah. or give me an article. Like, is yeah. this true? And, and yeah. for those who haven't listened to it, the uh, hoax episode, we talk about the Cernobis giant. 
Uh, he's 180 foot tall Amazing. or long chalk mm. drawing in Amazing. England Amazing. with a uh, 26 foot long penis, erect yes. penis. Like most of us. <laughs> yes. Amazing. I don't know what she was trying to say to me when she gave that to yeah. me. She said it was She's all just, about a hoax. Yeah, but. yeah. She's just thinking about the possibilities out there. <laughs> <laughs> Human number three suddenly and there's a picture. So, uh, But she, uh, you know, marries a poet. Yes. And she has a poet. I'm a huge fan. Right. And she has a master's of fine arts from Sarah Lawrence College. Yes. Good. And she was recently included in a an anthology of Albuquerque poetry. Really? Put out by the University of New Mexico Press. Wow. Is, yeah. Let's yeah. Uh, let's post that link. Yeah, I send will. me the I link did. and I'll put it in the notes. Okay, that's fantastic. Congratulations, Mary. <laughs> yeah, they're lucky really to have good. her. Uh, you know, really. Yeah, she's yeah. she's I think is excellent. Her. Her poet, her poems about Mars are just amazing. Yeah, amazing. I highly yeah, recommend that. Funny book. and smart, and yeah. just really creative. Mm -hmm. and good stuff. But what I'm trying to say is that she, uh, she knows her stuff. Yes. yes <laughs> so she if does. she says something to me, I usually try to listen to it. Yes, you that's know. how you stay married as long as you have happily right. married. Right. She's I, I I say usually because she. Uh, she th says that you, I, I don't hear everything unless she sings it to me. So if, she, if it's something God, important, she, she has to sing it to me. And then it gets directly into my brain. Oh, I should try that. I'm going to start singing <laughs> you stuff. I know. It, it sounds awful. Like, God forbid my, my boss at work finds out about this. <laughs> He'll be like singing to me all the time like on Zoom calls. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, it's just something something that happened, and and I do find it it true. Like if there's a rhythm to something, it you just gets in there, and, and I can't well, that get makes rid sense. of it. I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I just saw that documentary on uh, uh, We Are the World. Have you seen that? Oh, you You're... mean the the thing back in the eighties? Yes, or... there's a documentary oh, on it, which is really good. But the only downside is. You're stuck with that song in your head for, you know, two weeks. Oh, no. We are the world. Oh, did, my God. Did they change anything? With I don't think they changed it. I think they went in. There wasn't any, you know, playing around with it or anything. It no, went God, no. <laughs> no. But it is an intro. I recommend the documentary. It's interesting. Really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How did you come out? I mean, did you come out liking the song more? or No. The same? Or no. <laughs> uh -uh. I feel the same about the song. As I did in the 80s or yeah, the 90s. Yeah. It was like for two decades we heard it yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Uh, and on yeah. The MTV used to play oh. it all the time, you know. It's oh, just like, and the video. Everybody. everybody but but it was just interesting to see how they got them all together because, you know, it's not easy to do that. You can't right. just get, you know, 60 <laughs> huge stars. Bob Dylan. I mean, come on. I know. Yeah. Waylon Jennings, I think, walked out or somebody like that. Some big. Oh, country. really? <laughs> yeah. He had it. <laughs> I got to get out of here. I think only about five of them have like, or maybe more, maybe six or seven have actual lines that they say. Everybody right. else is just the chorus, right? Right. So. It was just there, just being there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They kept coming back to, uh, uh, <laughs> they kept coming to the boss. They kept coming yeah. back to the boss. We are the world. <laughs> we are the children. Yeah. When you need to like really goose it. You we are to the <laughs> ones who make a brighter day. <laughs> It's like I was there. I just got chills. I just got yes, chills. Yes, are given. <laughs> Let's just do no, this for little, the rest. Put a little Vegas on the end of that. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Let's just do this for the next hour. <laughs> we'll have you sing this. For all the cast. All the cast. All the We chorus. are the world. <laughs> we are the children. Well, 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 well. There's, I can't I can't get it. I can't get up high. I can't get into my falsetto. Who was Sorry. that? Who was that? Uh, you know, what was her? Uh, girls just want to have Oh, fun. it's Cindy Lauper. Uh, Cindy Lauper. Yeah. yeah. Oh, where, okay. where, 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 where? <laughs> she, she really gets into it. Yeah. We'll cut that together for everybody. So yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll do, we'll do it green screen style while I'll play everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's, uh, let's get <laughs> on to sugar and salt. Yeah. 
So anyway, right. so Mary said to me, she said, what about salt and pepper mm-hmm. first, which was but a very not good. Not the music act. Right. The right. actual, the condiments. Right. And she was mm-hmm. saying, you know, it's something that on our table we see every day. Why don't mm-hmm. you do a show about mm-hmm. uh, salt and pepper? And then she said, she thought a little bit, and then she said, you know, better yet, why don't you do salt and sugar? Mm-hmm. Because there'll probably be more about sugar. Yes. Yeah. I I agree. Yeah. And uh, I, I agree as well, because, you know, although pepper is important, I think, uh, I don't think pepper's had as big of a impact on us. I feel bad for pepper, because it's there. <laughs> I remember as a waiter, you never have to marry the peppers. Never. You'd marry it doesn't the take sh- as much. No. <laughs> you'd marry, you get one weird customer who comes in and like just yeah. coats it in pepper. You ever seen those guys? There are those people. <laughs> no, out no, there. I haven't I mean, seen pepper's that. Pepper's a good spice. Yeah. It, but it just it's 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 the redheaded stepchild. It's always overlooked. Well, always I uh, a bridesmaid, never a bride. <laughs> I actually prefer pepper. I would say if I had to choose, I prefer pepper over salt. Really? Like ta- I like the what taste. Is better. wrong? Yeah. What happened to you? <laughs> <laughs> but just real quick, I mean, pe- pepper comes from, I, I guess it's peeper negrum is mm-hmm. the plant. Okay. It grows like a grape. Uh, really? And then the little peppercorns are actually the dried fruit and the seed around the, the pepper there. Wow. And uh, pepper's been around forever. The Romans knew about it. Remember when we did the Roman episode? We, I, I said that we used a lot of pepper. I was wondering, did they know that? And they did because uh, they had already, be, through Alexander the Great and everything going into India, they had brought mm. pepper back. And that's mm-hmm. where most of the pepper was coming from. Turns out when you conquer the world, you get a lot of different <laughs> stuff. You yeah. get exposed to a lot of different, yeah. <laughs> as you're raping and pillaging and burning right, them you down. Get some you're like, hey, wait a minute. What's this? Yeah, try mm-hmm. this sauce. That's it's great. Good. That's fantastic. <laughs> What advantage? What advantage of it? Uh, and, and so we wait. I, I was thinking about why. First of all, salt uh, not only makes things taste better, but mm. we also need salt in order to survive as yes. an organism. Unless you're a, a slug, <laughs> then yeah, it's don't the opposite. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. I don't. Know. Did you used to do that? Did you have to go out and salt the slugs? No, out? I never really killed things. I'm. I've never. Re- I've really? been a pacifist from early early days. Yeah, I'm just yeah. too afraid of hurting anything. I I used to. Uh, you know, you during the summers you'd go outside in Kansas and there'd be mm. slugs everywhere mm. and their little trail behind them. And for mm. some reason, my my mom or somebody would send me out with salt to go. Oh, go because they're bad for the garden. I think maybe I think they that's do what it was. for the garden. Yeah. Well, that's fine. <laughs> but you do that, then you got to clean up that thing. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's awful. <laughs> uh, and then also sugar is important because it's changed not only how we eat, our diet, our economies, our health, mm. and entire societies. And I'm not talking about, um, you know, the, the sugar plantations and slavery back mm-hmm. in the 1600s and 1700s. Right. Uh, but also sugar went from being a luxury item that only the rich could afford, like mm. back in the 1700s, uh, to it became something that the poor depended on to get their calories. Oh, God. And then wow. uh, and then now it's in almost everything we consume. Yeah. Is, yeah. Has sugar in it. Yep. Yep. Everything. And is it, 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 you always hear the, and I don't know if this is true or not, but everybody always says, you know, if sugar <laughs> came out now, the FDA would classify it as a drug or something did you hear that a lot i hear that all the time i'm like really (laughs) who do you hear that from like an ex addicts (laughs) from because i which i i'll I'll admit i tried to stop sugar one time oh i remember that those were tough days to be around yeah 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 Yeah. first of all you can't eat anything hardly because sugar's in everything yeah sugar's in everything everything and uh after about a month it was like a, something blue in my head. Mm. <laughs> something just <laughs> popped off, like a gasket popped off. And I could hear but a you hose running. You lost a lot of weight because you gave up yeah. bread at the same time, didn't you? Or something. Right. It was something like that. Yeah. Oh, my God. You were lean. Yeah. I mean, you're always in good, good physical. <laughs> you're a good physical specimen. But, but take your shirt off for the people no, watching. No, no, Come no. on. I'll, I'll and, post it. I'll post it later on the, adult, <laughs> the adults only intro to anthro. 
Was it fans only? We, only we fans. Need to get on, only only fans. fans. God, we, we need to get on that. We need to get on that. Yeah, that's do. where you get the real stuff. Yeah, that's where there you we get go. The real, yeah. yeah, that's where you get the real salt and sugar. <laughs> imagine, <laughs> imagine us doing this podcast right now. Totally naked. naked. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Well, my pants are usually off. Uh, of course, John, I'm mean, getting back to work here. Uh, yes. Uh, salty and sweet are two of the five tastes that we have. Yeah. Bitter. We- All right. Bitter's one? Is that one? Right. Yeah, that's bitter, one. Bitter, salt, sweet, uh, tangy. Well, uh, no. close. Keep going. <laughs> keep going. Yeah. Um, uh, what else orange, is tangy? Orange chicken. Wait, uh, orange chicken? Yeah. Yeah. What else is it? Citrus. Citrus. Uh, what is citrus, though? What uh, is citrus? Fruit. Fruity. Right. Fruit is, and it's a sour. Sour. It's sour. It's sour. <laughs> so that's the four. You got them. You nailed them. You nailed them. <laughs> that's what comes from taking notes, everybody. There's you one other, there's one other flavor when you have to swallow your pride. <laughs> Yeah, that one. That one's a combination. Ooh, that's of a, a tough bitter, one. bitter, salty, <laughs> sour, and bileless. Bileless. <laughs> bileless. Yes. Uh, no, the last one is umami, and umami is or the savory flavor. Oh, yum! Yeah, yeah. Mm. And yeah. Uh, that's what Wait, the salt's last... not umami, or salt falls into umami. No, it, there used to be four: salty, sweet, bitter, and sour. And okay. then not too long ago, they added umami. What's that? Like, like, like horseradishy kind of? No, like, it's what is savory? Like, what's uh, savory? I always thought savory was salt. I would say like mushrooms, kind of an earthy kind oh, of savory. Jesus. Yeah, oh. or Japanese like miso soup. Oh, I like they miso. Okay. <laughs> now, okay. Yeah, now you love I like, like mushrooms that. too. Yeah, as long as you yeah. have a good old jug of ranch dressing, <laughs> oh, no. I'll be fine. Do you eat them with a uh, raw raw mushrooms? Oh yeah, I like raw it? mushrooms dipped in ranch. Yeah. Dr- in thousand uh, ranch. I mean, Hidden Valley Ranch. You dip you dip yeah. a piece of poo in Hidden Valley Ranch. And you <laughs> I mean, let's face it. I I was just uh, thinking about our podcast recently. I read something this week. Where in Missouri, people were apparently they go out looking for mushrooms in Missouri. And every time they do, they find uh, human remains. Jesus. <laughs> come across some body, which reminded me of our uh, of our forensic anthropology episode. God, right? I love how you're like, uh, you know, you're you're adding you're, you're adding little Easter eggs here. Sending yeah, people yeah. back. That's great. Yeah. Stitching it all together. If you Good. Know. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Uh, and. To show how important taste is to humans, uh, it's how we interpret the world. We use taste terms to describe people and things in addition to just food. For example, we'll say that somebody is bitter, mm. or he has a bitter expression. Yeah. Uh, it's a bitter pill to swallow. Mm-hmm. Uh, she had a sour look on her face. Sour puss. Yeah, sour puss. That's a good mm. one. Uh, or some unsavory characters mm. came into the bar last night. No, oh, man, unsavory. <laughs> unsavory. Not mushroom. Yeah, not unsavory. Mushroom. Unsavory. <laughs> uh, yeah, you don't say. It's a, what, he's really savory. Yeah, they, they were savory's savory. tasty, I guess. Yeah, and, yeah. And we're, you know, <clears throat> unsavory is like Mm-mm. no, that's wrong, bad. Yeah, and these are all taste terms. Um, mm-hmm. But when it comes, especially to salty and sweet terms, the list is endless. Endless. And, and the way we use them has much more emotional weight than the other tastes, I think. Mm. So we say things like, he's worth his salt. Oh, yeah. You know Oh, that. yeah. I like or that. Or she's salt of the earth. Salt of the earth. <laughs> dependable, genuine, unpretentious. Pillars of salt. <clears throat> God turned yeah. all the everybody into pillars of salt. If you right. looked back, uh uh-uh, uh, forget it. Would about you have it. looked back? I yeah, would have looked back. I couldn't. I can't help yeah. it. I was just in a um doing a thing at a steel plant. We were shooting this thing, and somebody was <clears throat> welding, and I could <laughs> tell they were welding, and still I just went right over and looked at it. I just turned my head and looked right at it. Did it? I mean, did you get the the ghost the ghost shadows? For, of yeah, the for a minute it went away, thankfully. But God damn, hmm. I'm such an yes. idiot. I can't, yeah, you can't help it. I can't I mean, stop it. <laughs> welding is so fascinating. 
if you see somebody welding, you have to go over there. Whether you yeah, have you a can't not do. It. Don't look. Don't look. Don't, well, yeah. there I just did it. God damn it! <laughs> just burn my eyes. Burn my eyes. Uh, you mentioned the Bible, but uh, in the book of Matthew, Jesus actually said to the disciples, you are salt of the earth. Mm, that's where it and, comes from. Yeah, and he was meaning it in a good way because salt used to be what was used to preserve things yeah. you know, back in the yeah. old days. So yeah. he's saying, you know, you're the preservatives mm. of what's good in the in the world. Wow, so, I like that. Yeah. Uh, so see, I go Old Testament, hmm. you go new. <laughs> I know that's I why we work. We cover it. We cover it all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got it all. We, we got, got it. it. All. We got it. Uh, we'll get some Buddhists in here. We'll, yeah. <laughs> we'll try to make some jokes out of that. Too. <laughs> uh, old sailors are called salty dogs. Oh man, or old salts. You know, they've been out in the, on the ocean mm-hmm. for a while. Bath uh, salts that you can get high with. <laughs> did you well, ever do bath salts? No, did never did. That was after my time. I would have though. I always I, I drew the line at that. I think I, I was really? like, no, I'm I not never, going to do it. I never even heard it. about it until I was sober. But if somebody yeah. said, "Hey, inhale these bath salts," it'll get you high. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I definitely would have done it. <laughs> Just crazy. I don't know if you still say. I used to see them like a. Uh, I don't know, at, at Quick Trips or something like yeah. that. <laughs> at, at the counter, it'd be like, you know, they've caught on to that. They've caught on to that. Yeah. A lot of kids coming in, like, like wanting to take a bubble bath or something. I, I don't poppers, know. Poppers, you... you can still get poppers everywhere, <laughs> which is the craziest thing. Amyl nitrate. You can get yeah. it everywhere. I still see it. I have There's nothing crazy. wrong with that. <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Come on. I don't be a mind stick it. In the I loved it. I always, <laughs> I'd hit them. For 30 seconds, your brain would go, yang, 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 yang. And then right back to where it was. Yep. <laughs> Worth every penny. Yeah. Uh, there's also a bluegrass song called The Salty Dog Blues. Oh, uh, I like that. Famously done by Lester Flatt and Earl Scruggs. And they say, quote, let me be your salty dog or I won't be your man at all. Honey, let me be your salty dog. Oh, <laughs> so, uh, all right yeah let him I be who he is let him be who he is you think is that's it, what it means i don't know no i mean but all, all i can think about is beverly hillbillies because they, <laughs> they put those two on beverly hillbillies i know they did <laughs> i think they made him cousins of jethro's or something did they really yeah i think so yeah, yeah. uh i used to love that show because they, they would go back and forth between shows a yes. lot remember they go yeah, over to petticoat over. junction yep. and then they come mm-hmm. back they green uh, acres and they would cross yeah, over everything. Yeah. So are, true. Uh, but I don't know what salty dog means in that one, but mm. if it's like any other blues, old blues song, it's probably something really dirty. Yeah. Let me go <laughs> out and have sex with anybody I want. Come on, baby. You're salty dog. Come on. Yeah. Uh, and there are tons of sayings about salt. For example, the Victorians had a saying that quote, kissing a man without a mustache is like eating an egg without salt. Ew. <laughs> that, every word in that sentence I don't like. <laughs> well, it either says something about like Victorian sex or about Victorian cuisine. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. <laughs> I put salt on my hard boiled eggs. Do you? Yeah. It's like a, a classic. I can't eat it without it. Yeah. I like a little dip it in some salt. I do enjoy that. Um, mm-hmm. Also, uh, salt on watermelon. People always oh, say, like, yeah. if you God, love that salt can help bring out the, yes. the sweetness. I sweetness. like salt on watermelon. I love that. Yeah. Mm, that makes me uh, want some. <laughs> Jean-Paul Sartre, the existentialist French Don't philosopher. you mean Jean-Paul Salt? <laughs> oh, good wow. night, everybody. Wow. <laughs> good night. Where's the, uh, the, where's our, oh, right. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm so slow. Right. on. The- Should we do it? All right. <laughs> there we go. go. Got it. There you go. Do you want to do it again? Do, do another take on that one real quick. John Just- Paul Sarti. Don't you mean Sartre? Don't you mean John Paul Salt? <laughs> there, we go. there we go. Perfect. Uh, he actually added to that Victorian, uh, saying by saying a kiss without a mustache, they said then is like an egg without salt. I will add to it. And it is like good without evil. Mm. <laughs> what? <good> really- <laughs> I don't understand any of that. <laughs> he took it all the way into good, yeah, good yeah, or yeah. evil. You know, it couldn't be. <laughs> I don't even understand any of that. 
so anyway, John, before we uh, begin, I just want to talk a little bit about taste itself. Uh, as you know, we humans are considered to have five basic senses. We have right. hearing, what? touch. I didn't feel anything. <laughs> we have hearing, touch, uh, smell. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> you, you can do the rim shot with that one, and I'm not going to pay attention to it. Uh, we have a uh, hearing, touch, sense, smell, sing, and taste. And uh, there's and some debate. Kind of, yeah, emotion now. Is, yeah. yeah, yeah. There's some debate over all the senses we have, uh, and we'll we'll save that. But, yeah. Uh, but the thing is, they say in the article, "Human Biology of Taste," Stephen Gravina, Gregory Yep, and Mahmoud Khan say that human taste can be still distilled down to the basic five taste qualities of sweet, sour, bitter, salty, and umami, okay. or savory, which we mentioned okay. already. Yeah. And umami, it, it was been around, people have known about it since 1908. <clears throat> and umami responds to uh, glutamate, the hmm. chemical glutamate. And that's why okay. they put MSG or monosodium glutamate into food to mm. bring out the umami. Okay. To bring out the Okay. Umami. I like MSG. <laughs> I love that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I always wonder what would happen if you just ate the MSG. Now yeah, I don't know. On its you, own. you could snort it. We could get some. <laughs> what was that in uh in, in uh National Lampoon's vacation? Was it the Randy Quaid character? Remember he was like, yes. you, know, you know they call this hamburger helper, but I think it does pretty good on its own, you know. So, <laughs> so maybe that's what MSG. Why why does it need to be added to anything? Uh, and then they continue that although the sense of taste has been viewed as a nutrition quality control mechanism, mm -hmm. the human experience of ingesting food is the interaction of all five senses. Oh, wow. Okay. So we, we have uh, the sights, sounds, and smells of food prepare the body for the next meal. Hormone levels rise, the stomach rumbles, mm. and saliva starts to flow before a f bite of food is taken. No, I'm getting hungry. <laughs> Are you? I just, I'm getting so hungry. So the idea, they say, uh, as the food is placed in the mouth, taste, temperature, and touch receptors screen for quality and intensity, stimulating the appropriate saliva in preparation for chewing and swallowing, or in the case of unpalatable or toxic materials, expectorating, retching, or vomiting. Oh. If you've ever had any bad sushi, you know what I'm talking about <laughs> oh, right no, there. That sounds <laughs> That's the worst. That's almost, yeah. Anybody who's yeah. had food poisoning of any kind. Yeah. Oh. That you can never go back to that food. Right. It's tough. Right. Uh, so in other words, they say pleasant tastes like umami or savory, sweet or salty indicate mm. to us the nutrient value of the food. So the taste is actually making Connected. us want to eat that, knowing that, that it's, it's good. Yeah. yeah, it's like being thirsty and, and needing water. It, it's right. a way to yeah signal you. Uh -huh. <laughs> and bitter and sour tastes, uh, they tend to indicate that something is toxic or spoiled. Yeah, you got so. that right. Unless it's those <clears throat> Sour Patch Kids candy. God, is that good. <laughs> oh, no. You ever had like those? Stuff? No, oh. no. I, I'm not a sour person. I'm not oh, I love it. It's so <laughs> wrong. It's right. It's fantastic. You haven't lived. You haven't experienced being a human until you I, go down the sour yeah, road. Yeah, yeah. We may have to do... I should have... If you had been home for for this one in preparation for it, you've been in... Where? Out in Ohio. Yeah, or I, in, yes, I was performing in Columbus, Ohio at the Nest Theater. Shout out to them. Yeah, nice. Just uh, flew in. But if you had been back, maybe I would have sent out some of these things for us to try it. <laughs> we could have tried some, yeah, some umami or something like that. Well, well there's we'll a game do... also you can play with. Um, oh, what are those uh, jelly beans that Reagan liked? Uh, the jelly bellies. Yes, the jelly there's bell. a game where they give you the worst kind, like once. Oh is yeah, like the yeah. Taste of diapers. One's cat food. Like it's booger, insane. booger, it's one, booger. Yeah. Yes, I've played that game with my daughter. It's horrific and fun as hell. <laughs> they should do like gasoline or something. You yeah, know, oh, some they've better. got some that are just like, oh my god. The diaper one was really tough. Tough. 
Is it uh <laughs> was it the diaper was it a full diaper or was it, it, it the No, but it was it was I can't even explain. It was the, just what the plastic or something. I don't even or? know. It was right. oh, it was horrible. Uh, but anyway, the uh, Gravina and his crew also say that things like the texture of food, the sense of touch, will also communicate to us if a food is harmful. For example, if you taste something painful, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sharp or grainy, you you say that like I this shouldn't be in my mouth. I shouldn't yeah. be eating this thing. And really slimy stuff, too. You have to kind of override that. Yeah. Like, say you're eating, like, I don't know, like eel or, or um, oh, God, urchin, sea urchins, that, that yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah, you kinda, yeah. You, it doesn't seem right, but you got to kind of override that to enjoy it. Yeah. And and they say, on the, on the other hand, things that are creamy mm. signal to us uh, that it's full of fat, mm. which is, are things that we like. Yes. You know, desirable fats. Yeah. And I remember one time as a kid, speaking of the like touch and using your taste as a touch, I took a sip of pop down in the Ozarks. Uh oh. And and it was during summer. And I remember oh thinking there was something something was in there. Oh, <laughs> and I was no. rolling it around on my I tongue. knew where this was going. <laughs> oh God. What it was, was it? And then I realized it was moving. And oh god. It, it was a bee. Oh, did it sting you? Yeah, it was right when I had been rolling it around. Like, what is that? I, you know, it felt like a piece of paper. So I was like, "Oh, there's no label." On it. And then, right when I thought that, right when I realized it was a bee, that's it when it stung me. Oh, yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, that's horrible. Uh, <laughs> my wife was drinking a bottle of water, but she, yeah. it was to her left. We were at a camp out. It was to yeah. her left, and to her right. Uh, one of the kids was collecting tadpoles in a bottle of water, <laughs> oh, no. and she took a big old hit off of the tadpole. <laughs> Did she get one? Did she get one? Oh Did yeah, she got a few. Oh, really? oh, oh yeah. No. Oh. <laughs> What'd she do? What, oh, was it, like, it was out, screaming it was amazing, and, yeah. over the top. It was incredible. Did you have to come home? Did you have to? No, come home no, there? no. <laughs> No, we we continued on. It was camping, man. We had to rough yeah. it. Yeah, that's that's what they she did in the old day. Tune. Yeah, that's what they did back <laughs> in the day. Uh, Gravina, Yep, and Khan say that uh, all of these sensations are transmitted via cranial nerves to the central nervous system, where olfactory input and past experiences merge to give an emotional, sensory, and physiological response to the taste. Mm-hmm. And and I think. Again, if you think about it, our taste is really a combination of all of our senses. Yeah. As well as our past memories and emotional associations Man. that we have with certain foods. Everything's connected. Well, it's like, you know, that old, uh, you know, you cl- you you blindfold somebody and close yeah. their nose and they can't tell the difference between a <laughs> pear slice and an apple slice or something like that. First of all, I wonder who would ever let anybody do that to them. I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't trust know. anybody enough no. to let them. Like, we're going to put something in your mouth and we're going to blindfold you, hold your nose, and oh, put something on. in What your about mouth. your wife? That's kind of sexy. <laughs> it's like nine and a half weeks. I don't know. Yeah, let her do it. <laughs> be something awful. It'd probably be something awful. It's tadpoles. It's tadpoles. I found them out there. It's slug. I found a slug out in the backyard. You wouldn't be able to relax and just enjoy it. <laughs> I know. I know. I'd be like, I don't You'd trust You'd have anybody. Kim Bassinger. You'd be Mickey Rourke. <laughs> Kim Bassinger is trying to put a pear in your mouth, yeah. and you'd be like, I can't. I just yeah, can't. I keep pushing her hand away. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Stop it. I want to take this off. She'd be mad starting the music again. <laughs> Why can't I just have it? Why can't I have my eyes open doing it? <gasps> What's it? Uh, in her book, Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat. Have you ever seen that? That book was very popular. No. Uh, mastering the Elements of Good Cooking. Samin Nazrat says, Flavor lies at the intersection of taste, aroma, and sensory elements, including texture, sound appearance, and temperature. And And I think, you know, because it's, it it gets into your it's past experiences too, and yes. I think that's a reason why you know if you get sick off of a food, yeah, and end up throwing up, yeah, the chances tough. are you never forget yeah. that you yeah. never want to mm-hmm. have that food you again. You can never go back. That's true. Yeah, I uh, 
I one time my <laughs> my mom gave us made my brother and I uh, liver and onions. Oh, yeah, and it was bad and, liver. No, no, it was oh. the liver was okay, I guess. But then oh, my brother God. took me to the Royals game. Oh no! And in the middle of the game, I I just had to throw up that liver. Oh God! <laughs> and then you were fine and had a hot dog and you enjoyed the game. Well, I don't know. I it was I, after that. I mean, I always associate uh, liver and onions with the royal. It, it, amazingly, I don't want to eat uh, liver and onions, and I don't want to watch baseball anymore. <laughs> they both. They both <laughs> wow, that's a bad liver. I know. Man. I know. But it's like to get I, I smell pastime. liver now, and I hear the music. You know, like <laughs> bah, 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 bah. <laughs> you know, I had that. God damn it! I had that sound effect. I could have just Did hit you? it right there, but somehow yeah. I erased it from our. Did you really? I can't find but, it. To change your credit card on the site, maybe <laughs> that's it. We don't get. They're using the old credit card. Your bank card. They're using your bank card. Once they start using the prepaid bank card, then you, you don't get all those. Uh, so anyway, John, we uh, we will start our discussion. I mean, we've been discussing, but we will talk about salt. Mm. And just to get some background information on salt, chemically, table salt is sodium chloride. Mm. And Samin Nosrat again says one of uh, sodium chloride or salt is one of several dozen essential nutrients without which we we cannot survive. Uh huh. So wow, yeah. It, all right. And, and she says the human body can't store much salt, so we need to consume it regularly to carry out our basic biological processes. Well, and now so, it's got iodine in it to keep us from getting goiters. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we you need don't our see salt. Any, I think there was a time when people used to have go- goiters. Like they they yeah. were calm it. Yeah. You don't see a lot. No, no, you don't. As a kid, I remember seeing <clears> them. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Me too. Growing up, you'd see them around town. Yeah. People with goiters. Uh, and then in the article, sodium intake and health, Andrew Mente, Martin O'Donnell, and Salim Youssef say the importance of sodium to human physiology suggests that its relationship with help with health is likely to have a sweet spot, meaning too little or too much is expected to have adverse health consequences. Ugh. Well, that's true with everything. <laughs> Yeah, they, surprise, they got a grant. For it. They got a grant. They for got it. a grant. <laughs> wow. I mean, what, what what isn't that way? They should. We should get a grant for what isn't moderation. <laughs> yeah, that would that would be the. Yeah, uh, that's the a grant. Yeah, we'd have we'd have like volunteers for that study going out the <laughs> going out the door. Put that on a. <laughs> I remember when uh when I worked for VH1. Uh, for the game show yes. and and it was they were looking for contestants and they said uh we need people who know music who mm. just are really into music and who know like the music industry know the history of music rock music and i remember coming in one day and it was all people that looked exactly the same they were all like <laughs> middle-aged guys with yeah. concert t-shirts on i was gonna you know say I mean? who work at comic book stores or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Re- record stores. I'm just, I mean. when, when you said that, the first thing that came to my mind was, God, I hate those people. <laughs> they know everything about music. <laughs> yeah. Oh. But they, uh, and then after that, we realized, you know, the, the producers were like, look, you got to just, you got to. <laughs> Let's <laughs> dumb it down and get some. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Enough of it with trying to be like a real music story. Just get, yeah. some, they, just get yeah. some hotties in here. Yeah. You know I mean? Right. Um, uh, but anyway, those guys all won every every episode. They won the game show. Yeah, they of knew course. everything. About they knew it. every single thing. We're gonna play yeah. one note. <laughs> it's the Beatles, Strawberry Fields. God, yes. <laughs> one note. <laughs> <Bing>. <laughs> Strawberry Fields forever. It was, and then know? they go on further. And did you yeah. know that yeah. Strawberry yeah. Fields was a patch and of George- grass that was yeah. near? <laughs> And George Martin, when he was <laughs> engineering this, he decided to. Uh, so anyway, they say that sodium is tightly regulated by many processes, renal, biochemical, endocrine, immune, and neural, to maintain blood sodium within a normal range or that sweet spot. Okay. So that's wow. what our body is trying to do. It. We're pumping and, uh, it in and pumping it out just to get <laughs> right. the right pH or whatever. 
Right. Well, Mark yeah. Kurlansky in his book, Salt, which we mm. mentioned Kurlansky. Oh, here we go. He says that, you know, if you think about semen and urine. Oh, boy. Yeah. I don't want to Along think about with that blood. Right now. <laughs> Jesus, blood? Where's Kurlansky <laughs> taking us? Well, semen and urine. Okay. I keep like this. because <laughs> And you point at me when you do yeah, it. Yeah, so I, really... <laughs> I know you. I know you. <laughs> Uh, semen and urine, along with blood, tears, sweat, and almost every other part of the human body, contains salt, hmm. which is a necessary component in the functioning of cells. Without both water and salt, cells could not get nourishment and would die of dehydration. Hmm. All so, right. Okay. Uh, so I guess, in in other words... I know it's true to- for semen and salt <laughs> and urine. I know it's urine. Uh, I- but... But the thing is, we need it. We need it. We need to have it. It, It not only tastes good, but we actually need salt, I guess. I understand. Um, And in the article, sodium in your diet, the FDA actually makes a distinction between table salt, uh, which they say is a crystal-like compound that is abundant in nature, and sodium, which is a mineral and one of the chemical elements found in salt. Mm. And most dietary s- sodium, they say, over 70% comes from packaged and prepared foods. Yeah, for <clears throat> sure. Yeah, yeah. And so it's not coming from just, you know, cutting out the shaker of salt that you right. put on there. Right, It's you, know? you. It's like you trying to quit sugar. It ain't going to happen. <laughs> right. It just ain't going to happen. Right, right. Yeah. No, you still, I, I, I know people who like, before they even taste the thing, it's like, give me the salt. Yeah. You know, give me the salt. Yes. Yeah. Or that pink uh, salt. You know that, uh, what do they call that? That uh, Himalayan oh, or something? Oh, it, I love it. <laughs> give it to me. Can you tell a difference? I mean, that's the thing. People, people can tell a difference in the different I flavors. I doubt I can. I yeah. really doubt it. I just see it as like cocaine. Back in the days when I did cocaine, the pink cocaine was the pure. So I was just oh, really? thinking, oh yeah, yeah, I'm thinking the same thing. <laughs> mm, give it to me. How do you how do you could you eat it or <laughs> what do you do no, with the salt? Or snort or? it. Oh, the yeah. salt, I just lick it. Okay. Give myself a nummy. Yeah. Put it in the tip of a cigarette. <laughs> You're fine. You're kicked. You're clean. <laughs> go on. Go out in the world. You'll be fine. Uh, the FDA says that 40% of the sodium consumed by Americans comes from deli meats, pizza, burritos, and tacos, snacks like chips and popcorn, burger, and burgers. So I all the good all stuff. All of that. I eat that. I, that's kind of my diet. That's really everything I eat. Yeah. God, yeah. tacos and burritos. I love that I yeah. didn't mention them both. Yeah. Not tostadas, yeah. though. Those are fine. <laughs> yeah. so- the loophole. You found the loophole there. <laughs> uh John, I have to ask you at this point. Do you have a do you have a salt tooth or a sweet tooth? How would you describe it? I'm tooth? more sweet. I'm more sweet. Are you? Yeah. I I I I I I need me some chocolate, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But I enjoy both. I gotta say, now that I say that, I I enjoy me a salt too. I don't know. If you had to binge, which one do you think you would binge first? Like if God. you, I think I would. <laughs> you know, I I'm just think I'm just imagining the trillion times I've eaten a bag full of Lay's. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's so satisfying. Yeah, yeah. God, right now, I just want it. Is it making you want to talk yeah. about all this? Oh, yeah. I, I haven't eaten. I just got off the plane. I'm sitting here. My stomach's <laughs> going crazy. I, You know, uh, Mary and I both, she's like a salt tooth. Mm. Like she loves chips and salsa. Yeah, I great. do too. Yeah, And I'm a sweet tooth. Like I love, I can't, I got to watch my sweet tooth because my sweet tooth can get away from That's me. That's why I'm the perfect threesome for you two. <laughs> you right know, because I can go either way. You're umami. Yeah, Bobby. I can <laughs> snuggle right down between you two and we'd be fine. I would, you know, we always laugh about it because we never have an argument about who ate the last snack because we, we <laughs> don't. Got, so don't, they you, should put that on like compatibility. That's uh, a great, surveys. boy, that's a great idea. Yeah. Finally, something on a, one of those dating sites that means something. <laughs> yeah, it's not to see what you have in common. When it comes <laughs> we were, to snacks, you want to be bipolar complete, yeah. opposites. Opposite you know sides I mean. of the kitchen. <laughs> uh, Mente O'Donnell and Yousef say that it's been theorized that Paleolithic humans consumed about one gram of sodium a day. Wow. And, and then what do we uh, do? 
four fin, grams. Fin. <laughs> four oh grams. At least. At least, oh. I would say. We're so uh, bad and wrong. And uh, just from an anthropological standpoint, they say salt was instrumental in the transition from hunter-gatherer to settled communities as it allowed the preservation of perishable food during the winter. Right. That makes I mean, that is the that's the whole hmm. ticket, isn't it? Yeah. Because yeah. if you don't have to hunt every day, you don't have to keep moving. Right. Right. And there and you, you couldn't are. do that. I mean, if you could preserve your food, yeah. you could stay in one place over the winter. You wouldn't have to keep walking. They're like, oh Jesus, we got some some <laughs> guy figured out if I pour these weird crystals I found. Yeah. On yeah. my meat, it'll, it's going to stay good. It's it's going to taste crazy, but it'll stay good. It'll feed me. How did uh, that happen? I know. I know. And then they say, you know, we, we had talked about before about salt becoming an early trading commodity and the word salary being from the Latin salarium. Mm -hmm. And originally it was a monthly allowance to Roman soldiers to purchase salt, uh, indicating its importance to society. And I think there, I remember growing up where people used to always say, oh, well, you know, the Romans paid their soldiers in salt. Right. Uh, and now I've come across some, uh, you know, reach, uh, recent academics saying, you know, they didn't really, we don't think they did that. But this makes sense that they would give them like a, an allowance, a stipend yes. to go out and get salt. Right. It's like, uh, you know, in World War II, they would give them chocolate and cigarettes and coffee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, just to... <laughs> but the robots when you're just marching around, yeah, like they needed, you had to have salt. Oh, or I else see. You're yeah, cramping they, up. Yeah, cramping up, right. You know? They would just give it, force it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then uh, in an article, to, or let me see. Well, Gandhi. Let's go back to. We'll go to this first. Gandhi actually said, "Next to water and air, salt is perhaps uh, the most vital to health." Really? Well, but he yeah. wasn't. I mean, you look at Gandhi. <laughs> I mean, mentally and spiritually healthy for sure, but he yeah. did. I mean, he was always not eating to get some political thing happen. I don't know if we should go to him with physical hell. He treated his body like a, a, a lever, really, to get <laughs> things done. I know. Well, the thing is that he had in 1930, he did led a protest against the British monopoly of salt. Oh, and that's where I see. he told the Indians to go make their own salt I from seawater. And the British actually went out and tried to prevent him from going out into the ocean and making his own salt. His own salt, yeah, because that's what he he was saying how important it was and how unfair it was that the British had a monopoly. Over I something. knew it was something <clears throat> like that. He was, uh, yeah, and, uh, yeah. Uh, and so where, where does our salt come from, John? Nozrat says, all salt, salt comes from the ocean, be it the Atlantic or a long forgotten sea. Yeah, so that's cool. It's, yeah, so it's whether or not it's we're taking it directly out of the ocean and evaporating it to make salt, or we're going underground and mining it out. The mining it out would be like a, a long forgotten sea or But ocean. then it gets crystallized because <clears throat> it's been down there so long. Yeah. Yeah. And Pierre Laszlo, and a French author and chemist, says that seawater contains various salts of which sodium chloride is predominant. And he says the salinity of seawater is on average 3.5%. Hmm. So, wow. uh, and in the article... Uh, I don't salt. like it when it comes out my nose. <laughs> a big wave hits me. It comes out my nose. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Uh, and, and an author, Dana Poland, says, from an historical point of view, the real interest attached to salt lies in the bearing which localities rich in either natural salt or salt springs have a, had upon the movements of the human races. Wow. So, so people were at one time moving around or as salt locations actually influenced how people where they located, where they settled. Makes sense. And where they migrated. It's like finding and, gold before yeah. gold was necessary. Yeah. And there was a historian named Frederick Jackson Turner who uh, wrote a lot. He was an American historian who wrote a lot back in the 1800s about the pioneers and mm. settlement of this country. And, and he theorized that the early settlers were tied to the coast by the need, need of salt without which they could not preserve their meats or live in comfort. And he said in his theory, it was 
the discovery of salt. I mean, mind you, there's been other things, mostly militarily, <laughs> right. that, that allowed them to go move over the Appalachian Mountains. But, right. but his theory, one of his theories was that it was the um, discovery of salt hmm. past the Appalachians that allowed the early Anglo uh, American settlers to, to be able to go out and live uh, past the Appalachians. Right. Makes sense. <clears throat> Otherwise, you yeah. got to cook your, you got to catch your food every day. Right, right. And like I say, other historians since then, I mean, he was writing back in the 1800s, but other, other historians have said like, well, you know, there's actually some other economic and political and military reasons that allowed it. But it's an interesting thought, I think, yeah. for him. And then also, uh, there was another guy named John Jekyll, who historian who wrote about that was the salt licks uh, in, in the Ohio Valley where the buffalo would go looking for the salt licks. Oh, wow. And they and and the buffalo herds would like create what's called a buffalo trace, which like the herds were so big that they would make almost roads. Yes. Yes, I had heard this. This is Yeah. amazing. Yeah. What a what a time to see all mm. that, man. I know. Just I know. Thousands and thousands of head of these creatures, these massive creatures. Yeah. Crazy. And, and when the settlers came over, from the Eastern seaboard, they would follow these Buffalo traces mm -hmm. to, uh, because they were kind of, you know, everything was trampled down already. It was easier right. to travel on those, but all those Buffalo traces went from like the, the grasslands to the salt licks. Mm -hmm. So really this kind of, the salt was kind of leading the pioneers in the Ohio Valley to certain areas that the Buffalo had already found. That's great. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Uh, and then, uh, just so in, uh, you know, Kurlansky, he's, his book is filled with a lot of, uh, great salt lore. I'll just throw some out here. Kurlansky said the Romans called a man in love Salix, S-A-L-A-X, and which meant in a salted state. And that's where we get the word salacious. Wow. <clears throat> Yeah. He's salty. He's salty, <laughs> but he keeps coming back. Salty dog. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, John, uh, the Jewish covenant with God uh, when, at the Passover meal, I think it is, or maybe yes, at it, the Sabbath yep. meal, you have bread and salt, right? Yes. Yes, you do. Well, at the Passover me meal, it has to be unleavened, you know, because yeah. you're, you know, but yeah, you got to have the salt. Hell yeah. Right. And they say, again, coming back to salt was a preservative. It was seen as a good thing. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a symbol of preserving that covenant with mm -hmm. God. Apparently yeah. is what they say. Uh, and then evil spirits are supposed to dislike salt. Hmm. That's interesting. Well, you, you throw <laughs> salt over your shoulder if you spill it. Right, right. And in Japanese theaters, apparently salt was thrown on the stage before a performance to ward off evil spirits. Oh, I like that. Kind of like to throw some salt out of on my <laughs> stages when I perform. Excuse me. Don't, don't throw it at the audience. No. <laughs> it's just... Ow, it's in my yeah. eye. Uh, and then the Egyptians apparently were uh, the first to soak olives in salty brine. Oh, apparently you good. can't eat olives, you know, it, it, right off the tree. You can't eat them because they're, they're too hard. hard. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, I love um, a salty olive. Don't you? Mm. <laughs> yeah, I really do. I'm going to have to those, go get some. It's making those things back in my, you know, those glands, <laughs> saliva glands working now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, um, in Europe, the ancient Celts uh, were known to mine salt, like in Austria, where you go to Salzburg. Have you been yes, to Salzburg? No, I have that's, not. I've been to Vienna a couple of times, but uh, I've not been to Salzburg. But that's where salt, there was a bunch of salt. Yeah, it's Salt City. That's what Salzburg means. Wow. So, hey, everybody, and, let's uh, go to Salt City. <laughs> and the Hallstatt Museum in Austria says that uh, the term Hall, H-A-L-L, -L, which you may see lots of places with the term hall uh-huh goes back to the celts that use that to indicate a place where salt was found wow and in 1734 in the town of hallstatt uh in austria some uh some salt miners actually found like an old corpse of a celtic <laughs> celtic <laughs> salt miner still down there perfectly preserved uh, Pers yeah, of perfectly course. preserved yeah hey where's keith <laughs> I don't know. Come on. Let's go salt our cod. Okay. Uh, 
And then apparently salt was such a commodity in the Renaissance time that kings would have like an enormous salt seller or a salt holder. Wow. Uh, to kind of show their, you know, their wealth. And also it was supposed to be the, uh, the symbol of the health and preservation. Again, coming back to salt being a, a symbol of preserving, preserving. something. Yes. Wow. And, so they just have a big old salt closet, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Or, I mean, they would have it on the table with them. It'd be really Oh, ornate. I see. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, look, look how much salt I have. Yeah. Like, I can just pick, you know, you, you weren't supposed to touch it with it. It was supposed to be rude to touch it with your fingers. So you uh -huh. would use your knife to uh, pick up some salt. Oh, it's just like up. cocaine back in the 80s. <laughs> yeah. Same thing. <laughs> to grow a long pinky nail, grow a long pinky nail to salt your french fries. <laughs> Uh, and then real quick, John, before we move on to sugar, um, corned beef was mm. supposed to be the, the salting, the salted beef. Yeah. Was, and the corns are actually talking about the corn means some small bits, but those are supposed to be the grains of rock salt mm. that were used. God, I and, love corned beef. Yeah, me too. And Kurl Kurlansky actually says corned beef and salt cod were part of the rations for the British Navy back in the 18th century. So Interesting. I've gotten one step closer to coming up with your your ideal meal that you wanted to have, God. which is like the um, the navel. The yes, navel. <laughs> yes, the navel. Yes. Uh, real quick, just talking about sugar. Um, it, in an article entitled "Impact of Sugar on the Body, Brain, and Behavior," Clara Freeman and others say that sugar is highly palatable and rewarding, both in its taste and nutritive input. Excessive sugar consumption, however, may trigger neuroadaptations neuro in the reward system and decouple eating behavior from caloric needs and leads to compulsive overeating. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anybody who's had a box of those uh, peanut butter cups from Trader Joe's knows that. <laughs> I was going to say like a, a mint with a thin mints from the Girl Scouts. You oh, yeah. It's like, oh, just I don't want it. dinner now. <laughs> I don't feel good. I love that it completely messes with your reward system to the point where it decouples it from what you actually need. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, so, it's somehow taught you that you could just keep eating sugar. Yeah. And you and it, 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 there's no nothing in there saying, okay, maybe you've had enough. Okay, nope. maybe you had nope. enough. Nope. Okay. Mm -mm. Yeah. Not till it's empty. Uh, and then, of course, as we all know, excessive sugar intake in turn is associated with uh, adverse health conditions like obesity, metabolic syndrome, and inflammatory disease. And, and the World Health Organization recommends reducing added sugar to less than 5% of daily caloric intake. Oh, man. <laughs> Boring. <laughs> Yawn. Yeah. Um, <sighs> And in his book, Sweetness and Power, Sidney Mintz says that sugar or sucrose is an organic chemis chemical of the carbohydrate family. And simple carbohydrates include monosaccharides like fructose and glucose mm. and disaccharides saccharides like sucrose and lactose. Mm -hmm. And uh, so these sugars are handled by the body differently. Yeah. And yeah. what does that do? Well, Freeman and other researchers say that fructose allows overconsumption of calories by failing to activate the body's signals to stop eating. Like yeah. we were just saying. God. Yeah. It's so evil. Yeah. Yeah. God, is it and, good though? <laughs> mm. <laughs> no, well, that's, they also say that sugar or fat can strongly trigger the reward motivation and hedonic systems. And the hedonic system is, you know, like, that that's what makes you just think that it just tastes good. You're just yeah. eating, eating something just to be eating it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> oh, I love that feeling. I know. It's such a good feeling. Yeah. And they say that while evolutionarily, this may have been advantageous. So at one point, you know, prehistorically. It's a good way to get a lot of calories and get yourself, you know. Right. Yeah. Because you didn't know when you were going going to get calories. Yeah. Again. Hey, here's this fruit. Let's eat it as fast as we can because you know. Yeah. yeah. So it's just go bad. Just keep eating it. Just keep eating yeah. it. Just store it up. But now they say overeating becomes a liability in our current environment, which has no shortage of high caloric and processed foods. Yeah. <laughs> so so yeah. we don't need to do that anymore. No. Uh, and then also 
they say that sugar has been characterized by some as a as an addictive substance, which is what you're talking about. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. You just keep going. Well, if it if it doesn't sh- if your body isn't telling you to stop, then isn't that a <laughs> definition of addiction? Yeah, I mean they they compare it to drugs, uh, drugs or alcohol, basically. And I well, always alcohol know- has a lot of sugar in it, and right? That's a big part of alcohol. Is right. We, we crave that. And I think whenever like someone gets dry, like myself, uh, you go through a phase, maybe always, but you always have, if you're a, a sober alcoholic, you always have ice cream around. Yes. Yes. You know, and, you- and when people first get sober, and I work with a lot of people who do, there's lots of candy, lots of yeah, stuff like yeah. that. And so Freeman talks about most studies that about the addictive properties of sugar have been done on rats. And these studies have found that sugar addiction may be induced in rats by intermittent access to sugar uh, and in many ways uh, resembles opiate addiction. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> so, so what they did is... Finally, uh, if, we're getting yeah, at the root of things here. Right, right. So if you... Uh, rats with 12-hour access to sugar followed by 12 hours of food deprivation show binging withdrawal craving and cross sensitization to drugs of abuse like amphetamines. No, oh, man. <laughs> so, God damn it. Are you telling me I have to quit another thing? That I ain't know. happening. I know. All I'm I got telling left you. is is coffee, uh, yeah. sugar and masturbation. That's it. <laughs> you got to give them up. You got to no. give up two of them. Give up two of them. Give up two oh, of them. Oh god. Well, I ain't giving <laughs> up is- coffee, I'll tell you that much. This is a real Sophie's choice. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Which one? You know, you were the one who, who got me into coffee. Yeah. When we were in high school, because you were already drinking coffee, and I was like, "What's this yeah. deal with coffee?" And I remember getting the first coffee bug. And going, <laughs> this is fantastic. <laughs> yeah. And then we were off. We were then off we were and off and running. Up. Yep. Uh, they they do say that uh, alcohol and drug abusers tend to have a greater preference for sweet foods. Mm-hmm. especially uh, drug and alcohol abusers uh, with a family history of alcoholism and drug addiction, mm-hmm. suggesting there may be a genetic component to this association. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Well, you look at my yeah. family, they got a beer in one hand and a Snickers <laughs> in the other. <laughs> it's hell to clean up a party at the Lear's place. <laughs> Just melted chocolate, and all the ashtrays and, just messy like beer bottles with like chocolate all around the edges. Uh, so just real quick, John, where did our love of sugar come from in the books? Sugar changed the world. Mark Aronson and Marina Budos say that there is a drawing in a cave in Spain from 7,000 BCE. I'm it shocked them- it's not in France. <laughs> yeah, no. You all <laughs> seems like every cave drawing, everything's in France. Yeah. They wow. just haven't found it yet. They just haven't <laughs> found it yet. Uh, but it shows a man holding a beehive. Uh, okay, so I wonder already... if we were going to get to honey. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. And Sidney Mintz says that our primate ancestors would also have known uh, sweetness from berries, fruit, and honey. Oh, so we honey. always knew it. We God, always knew that it. honey. Can you imagine the first person? <laughs> How the hell did they discover honey? And then it was just like, oh, my God, this is the best yeah. thing ever in the world. I had just taught uh, 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 a class on comedy in 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 uh, Columbus, and one of the students uh, was a beekeeper. And oh, really? He, he brought me some, you know, fresh honey. Ooh. Oh, it was so good. Oh, I could have drank it. I could have drank the whole thing. <laughs> What'd you do? You're like a Winnie the Pooh. Whoop, you just grabbed it. Whoop, yep, I just chugged it. It's like chugging a beer, but in slow motion. Okay, go, go, go. 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 You just oh. like... Go, I'll watch. I'll go. watch. <laughs> I'll watch. You guys just perform. I'll oh, watch. You just so walk around good. with your hand in that jar. <laughs> God, those little bees know what they're doing. Uh, but in uh, 9,000 BCE to 8,000 BCE, they think cane sugar uh, was first grown back wow. in uh, New that Guinea. Wow. New Guinea. Yeah. 9,000 BCE. Yeah. Yeah. Sugar's and, old. <laughs> yeah, and then it went to uh, India in 1000 BCE, 
and 500 BCE it was in Persia, Egypt, China. And then they think around uh, 1100 AD or CE is when mm. it went to Hawaii. Mm. Like the Polynesians wow. took it to Hawaii. Interesting. Yeah, because yeah, they were uh, using those boats to get <clears throat> around everywhere. Yeah. And even in 300 BCE, one of Alexander the Great's generals uh, was sent to India and noted, quote, a reed in India brings forth honey without the help of bees. <gasps> oh, <laughs> so Alexander imagine. the Great was like, wait a second, what? <laughs> that. Get some of that. Yeah. But isn't that amazing that that's amazing. how they, they saw it? Like, it, it tastes like honey, but I don't know. It would have been mind-blowing i think yes you don't even have to keep you don't have to get stung yeah first of all but the thing is is like that's not the sugar we eat you know it's processed to to, it's like free basing it you know yeah yeah. like we cook it down and crystallize it (laughs) yeah yeah and then uh we also like you have things like saccharin which is you know like a hundred times sweeter than regular Mm. sugar as well god i love that stuff uh, Aronson and Budo say that sugar is different from honey in that obviously it's sweeter, but that sugar created a hunger, a need, mm. which swept from one corner of the world to another. Oh, boy. <laughs> it's the same story as somebody finding, you know, opium on po- in poppies. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. just it's the same story. We our, need it, baby. Old, <laughs> our big old brains. Look what our big old brains can do. Yeah. And and Sidney Mintz has a great quote. He he says, in 1000 AD, few Europeans knew of the existence of sucrose or cane sugar. But soon afterward, they learned they learned about it. By 1650 in England, the nobility and the wealthy had become inveterate sugar eaters mm. and sugar, sugar figured in their medicine, lit, literary imagery and displays of rank. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Sugar muffin. Said, sugar daddy. <laughs> yeah. Give me some sugar. Yeah. Give me some sugar. That's a note that blues that blues uh what's the old blues song? Sugar in my pot or something. Yeah. Sugar in my cup. Yeah. Which was uh Bessie Smith, I I think, sang it. Sugar and then Nina cup. Simone did a version of it. Uh what does it, it mean? It, it, again, it's like uh well, it's all it's a dirty, it's a dirty, uh, <laughs> dirty blues oh, song. I see. So, gotcha. Yeah. Put some sugar in my cup. You know, I think it says something like put hot dog in my buns or something. There <laughs> something you go. Like I get that one. Even somebody, an idiot like me can put that together. Yeah. It's, uh, Mint says that by no later than 1800, sugar had become a necessity. Yes. Albeit yeah. a costly and rare one in the diet of every English person. By yeah. 1900, it was supplying nearly one fifth of the calories in the English diet. One fifth. <laughs> Jesus. No wonder they all look sickly back then. I know. know? I know. (laughs) And and just so one of the, uh, you know, sugar cane looks like bamboo. It has a woody bark. And then on the inside, it has that kind of pithy interior. Uh Uh-huh. But to, to like, actually make it profitable, what you had to do is you had to, like, process it, like you were saying. So you had to chop it quickly. But once you chopped it, all the syrup started uh, to dry yeah, yeah yeah so you you had a couple things that you had to think about to make it profitable one was at, at time like you had to immediately process it mm. and secondly you needed large quantities of fuel for fires All right to, to boil this to down. boil it down yeah and so unfortunately as a growth out of sugar itself or our love of sugar and processing sugars to satisfy that you, you needed were what they decided at the time was slave laboring. You had uh-huh. to, it was slave labor. You had it to was brutal. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, in an article titled the sugar revolution, BW Higman says the rapid growth of sugar production and consumption from the 1500s through the 1900s is called the sugar revolution. And it had five major effects. It generated a massive boost to the Atlantic slave trade. Yeah. Because people, you just needed people to work that that sugar. Uh, it provided the engine for a variety of triangular trades. Remember triangular trades from school, where like no. you would pick up sugar. Oh, I it, see. And, and then make it into rum. Take uh-huh. that to uh, America. Get get cotton, and then yes. take that to England to get fabric, and then take that back to the Caribbean to trade that. You know, the triangular trade back back into for sugar. <clears throat> 
Yeah. Oh. And that said it altered European nutrition and consumption and it increased European interest in tropical colonies. So it kind of Europe needed places where they could grow sugar. So yeah, it was val those areas were valuable now. Right. Uh but the thing is sugar production was extremely dangerous. Uh, for the cutters, they work brutal, seemingly endless shifts. And then uh, they say that- Super sharp. It takes super sharp machetes to yeah, cut yeah. that stuff down. I've seen uh, videos. And I've had it. Have you ever had a like a real a sugar cane, like a piece yeah, of sugar yeah, cane? Just... It's wild. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's pretty good, though. It's it pretty is. Good. Yeah. We'll go right through. We'll tear through it just to get- and, and just to give you an idea of how bad it was for the enslaved people working on a sugar plantation, in 1689, each pair of workers was expected to cut and bind 4,200 stalks a day. Wow. wow. And then they, they say, you know, and then after that, you ha have to feed it into the crusher yeah. to kind of crush out the juice. Anything called and the crusher, it's got to be <laughs> dangerous. Well, yeah. The Aronson and Budo say that... Uh, they would keep an axe near the crusher. No, to in chop case, off the arm in case so it wouldn't pull you all the way in. Exactly. Oh my oh, god! So in case you, if you were an enslaved person that fell asleep, no, and, and you went, your arm went into the crusher. They could just hack off your arm. But oh, then, yeah. God. And then the other thing was, it took so much wood. Yeah, it took so much wood to keep those fires going. Twenty four hours a day. Yeah, they would keep Big, those going. Massive fires, massive. Yeah. Uh, and Aronson and Budos say that scientists have shown that people all over the world must learn to like salty tastes, sour tastes, and mixed tastes. But from the moment we are born, we crave sweetness. Mm. Cane sugar was the first product in human history that perfectly satisfied that desire. Yep. <laughs> so yeah. and then real quick at the same time in the 1600s you had the introduction of coffee mm, tea yeah. and chocolate like hot chocolate oh, oh yeah so suddenly you had Life all of these things good. that were better with sugar so that yeah, the demand for sugar just grew and then also during the industrial revolution in england they needed something for people to eat all the time to kind of keep them awake at work or give them a little boost. <laughs> so that's where people just started eating or, you know, drinking heavily sugared tea uh -huh. while at work, hot uh -huh. tea to keep you awake, to keep Caffeine working. And sugar. And then also sugary cookies or biscuits. Mm -hmm. uh, again, just to give you uh, that boost, you know. Yeah, that's what tea time's all about. Yeah. <laughs> the so, only thing about tea time I don't like is the tea. I just want coffee. <laughs> really? Too. Yeah. I I always uh we go at there's like an English tea house out here in Albuquerque that we go to. And you and like it's it? It's fun. It's, it's a whole fun. sandwiches and the whole thing. You but you're not going to give up coffee. Oh no, no. 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 <laughs> in fact, I no. stop at Starbucks on the way home. <laughs> So, John, just real, the one final thought about it, um, you know, on the one hand, Mint says, on the one hand, uh, given the that the working class diet was calorie short, meaning that it was hard to get in England <laughs> during the 1800s, it was hard to give enough calories to people. <sighs> and, and so the thing is, sugar was a way to give people the Keep calories they needed to live. Oh and so God. that's where suddenly you saw sugar going from a luxury item yeah. to suddenly poor people yeah. were eating sugar just to stay alive, just yeah. to get the necessary calories. Jesus, just to power and, their, their organs. Yeah. And just real quick, uh, Budos and Aronson say, if you consider all forms of sweeteners, for example, corn syrup, Americans today eat an average of 140 pounds of sweeteners a year. Whoa. <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah. But of that, only 40 pounds are cane sugar. So we're eating all the high fructose corn right. syrup, that's, all that. Well, that's what they say. They're, they've put that in everything. Yeah. And it's yeah. Uh, it's not good for us. But, uh, <laughs> you know, well, there you have well, it. Well, John, 
I, I think we've come to the end of our discussion on salt and sugar. It's, I, a, it's been a sweet ride. Uh, wow. Hit it, oh, hit it, hit it, wait, hit I can't. It. Okay, there we go. All right. <laughs> You're going to have to highlight that. If there's Story, of my, that yeah. Story <laughs> of my life. Story of my life. It's like, uh, uh, <laughs> Timing's everything. Timing's everything. Oh, boy, is that true? Uh. I don't know how do how do you feel about sugar and salt? Does this make you want to cut back, eat more? What do you? I mean, of course it does, but <laughs> we both know I'm not going to do it. I know. That's it's a... funny. I I am I I am trying to eat. Uh, I've cut back on bread and oh, really? uh, and sugar. Sh- uh, you I know, love like bread. yeah, I, I love, love bread. bread. God, it's so good. <laughs> I think bread was a more important invention than the wheel. Don't you? Yeah, I think we so could live good. without the wheel. We yeah, could we, could, without... we could drag shit around. <laughs> if I had a choice between like pretzels, like a big salty pretzel, and having to carry extra shit around, or not being able to like go to the store as easily or something, I would take the big Walk. salty pretzel. Yeah, because yeah. you could yeah. eat the pretzels while you're walking. <laughs> yeah, just, keep, <laughs> just keep it. I mean, just load up with bread. That's what I said. <sighs> Um, I also, you know, sometimes you just, life, life sucks. Life yeah. really sucks. Yeah. And sometimes you just need, you need some salty to, food yeah. or you need some, some sugar. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just it's true. <laughs> yeah. It's true. It, and that's why, I mean, and that's why drugs and alcohol exist too. Right. And tobacco and, and coffee right. and all those things. This is to distract us from how horrible this existence <laughs> can, can be. It can be sweet. But yeah. it also can be salty. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's amazing. You just have some condiments on the table there to help you get yeah. through it. Help you get That's through it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Well, oh, that, now I want a big gulp. I want a big gulp <laughs> and I want a bag of chips. I, I want to just eat a, a thing. I love vanilla bean uh, ice cream, like really high quality Ooh. vanilla bean. I, yeah. ju- I don't know why, but I'm just. I think it's because my dad used to make ice cream, yeah, you know, yeah. on a hand cranked ice cream thing, and he would yeah. make vanilla, and it was so good in the summer. And oh, mm. oh. remember you'd have to put rock salt or brown, yeah, that. rock salt remember? in that to make it. There you go. That's yeah. our show. <laughs> There's our show right there. My dad, and for some reason he'd make me sit on the thing. I guess yeah. it's because he needed weight to be able to crank it, so he'd yeah. make me sit on it. I remember uh, that must have been a thing. I remember mm-hmm. everybody, you'd have to take turns sitting on the, the ice cream maker. Yeah, because otherwise, that. when you're cranking it, it would scoot around, probably, yeah. you know? And then you get it out, and you always have lots of family there, and the, all of it was gone, like the first oh, round. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now we got to wait another three no. hours making this stuff. Yeah, it's like when so. you barbecue a tri tip. You're not going <laughs> to have any for tomorrow. No. <laughs> Maybe some gristle, but that's it. Yeah, yeah. You're not. <laughs> no. All right, John. Well, this has been lovely. Oh, uh, wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you for this. Once again, <laughs> Professor McRae, you've taken me on a wild ride. <laughs> uh, and uh, boy, this is human number two signing off. And this is human number one. Thanks for listening, everyone. If you enjoyed this podcast and found it interesting, please tell a friend about it. And don't forget to send us any ideas or thoughts that you have for future episodes and we will get to them we will yeah, get we, to we, we're gonna get to everything <laughs> we will if, if we get to that one or our our was it fans only our, our fans yeah, only fans site only. we'll get <laughs> we'll get to that we're expanding intro we're to expanding. Andrew is expanding we better talk to uh, mary about that before we <laughs> yeah yeah we if, pull the trigger on fans yeah only. i'll talk to her i'll, I'll work it out <laughs> okay I'll, okay she'll sing it to me she'll, she'll sing, sing it to you <laughs> uh, all right thanks all right. everybody we love bye. you guys love ya. bye <laughs>